Welcome Climate Viewers, my name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News. It's April 15th, 2015, and uh, we're going to talk about the Environmental Modification Accountability Act and the AMS uh, 2018 trip I just took to Austin, Texas. I've just completed all the videos for that. So I'd like to take you guys over to climateviewer.com slash nmod. And uh, here you can uh, check out the Environmental Modification Accountability Act, an act to end atmospheric experimentation without notification. So as many of you know, um, I went to the... 21st conference on planned and inadvertent weather modification and there's information about that right here you can just expand that and it's the 98th annual american meteorological society's meeting in austin texas it was january 9th through the 11th 2018 um i did get that trip completed and i've put the videos up right here um it says videos from the 21st conference on planned and inadvertent weather modification you guys can check those out here. Um, here, let me see. zoom this down some. Back to normal. And you can see all of the videos there from James Roger Fleming to the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory, Raytheon, UCAR, uh, Dr. William Cotton, and Dr. Daniel Rosenfeld, uh, Nicoletta Florio from BeHeroic.com, and a couple interviews before that. So check them all out there at climateviewer.com slash nmod or on the side of any page. You can just click right here, um, and that's E-N-M-O-D. Um, now, I am in contact with a state representative. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to give his name out just yet, but the plan is that they're going to review this legislation, help me write up a legal version of it. Hopefully, we'll be able to get it to the State Department for an add-on to... Um, you know, the actual in mod law, which was a weather warfare ban in 1976. It was signed by the United Nations. And uh, what, what I'm basically pushing for is accountability and transparency. And to do that, we want to create an international registry of atmospheric events, basically saying that if you're going to modify the sky in any way, that you will give a 24-hour notice, 24-48 hour notice, probably going to be much longer than that. Um, before you modify the sky. So what does that look like? Um, well, looks kind of like this right now. And I give a general definition of what I mean by atmospheric experimentation, which is things like release of chemicals, cloud seeding. Um, these are examples of that. Sounding rockets, tracer experiments, modification of pollution sources, um, something most people would not consider. And uh, basically, that's things like alteration of effluent stacks or like coal factory stacks, um, alteration of jet fuel or what's known as jet fuel doping for contrail induced cirrus control or contrail control, use of bunker fuel for uh, the creation of ship tracks, and any other technique that directly re that results directly in cloud creation or control. So that's just a generic anything else that you're doing that might be doing that you're going to have to let us know in advance before you do it so we know who what when where and why um and then a uh, third category electromagnetic or sonic energy things like ionospheric heaters lasers cloud ionizers resonance technology like acquiescence i blue are using to steer atmospheric rivers and any other technique that modifies atmospheric rivers, jet streams, pressure zones, ionosphere, and any other technique that intentionally alters temperature, rainfall, cloud cover, or any other measurable change in climate or weather. And I have a little infographic right here that you guys can check out. Um, 10 Technologies to Own the Weather Today, um, article on that right here. You can click on it and see all the references behind this, but it goes through those technologies where they're used in our atmosphere. The problem is most people do not know this occur. That's why I created weathermodificationhistory.com. I hope you guys will check it out. Um, it is the world's most accurate and fully inclusive um, website on the subject where you can see things like a news vault with almost 800 articles um dating back to the 1800s um really crazy stuff uh you know like tesla's tidal wave to make war impossible um very fascinating stuff 
Tesla's great invention to blow up hostile warships by electric waves. Um, <laughs> just tons and tons of interesting stuff. Producing rain with x-rays. I hope you guys will come over to weathermodificationhistory.com and check that out as well. Now, all of the videos that I showed you on here, um, they are available on climateviewer.com under the tag AMS2018. They are also available on YouTube. If you go to the 2018 page, you can watch all those videos here. Each one has its own little page. Just click on it. And uh, that's what it's going to look like. Hit play right here, and that's when the magic happens. So check these videos out. They're, they're very important to me. They're very important to a lot of people um, who helped me get there. Um, you guys can see the link to that at the bottom here. Um, you know, I did a GoFundMe to get there. I appreciate you guys' help. Uh, this was an amazing experience for me. Uh, I learned a lot. I hope that you guys will learn a lot from these videos I've done. And, uh, you know, I have gained some support already from this. Um, Dr. James Roger Fleming, while I was there, he said, I think there's a real important role you can play in this. There was a movement to ban atmospheric nuclear testing after Starfish Prime. Part of it was a run-up to the fallout plumes, then the limited test ban treaty, and that stimulated very much. That was stimulated very much after 1962. I think the ban was in 63, and so there was a public outcry and the strum of war, and men got involved, and very prominent people agreed that we were doing things that were beyond our kin. And so I think there's a role to keep this accountability there. I would argue for a longer warning period for the public notice. Interestingly enough, Dr. David Key said the exact same thing. I said, and he's a geoengineer, most of my audience already knows Dr. David Keith. Um, I think public notice makes sense because I think transparency is very important for building trust. I think 48 hours is much too short a period. I think a longer period makes sense to enable public commit comment on experiments. Obviously, one challenge is to define what constitutes an experiment. And as you guys can see, I did that at the top of the page. And the legal version will be very um, inclusive on that. Most sensor networks already have public data access. Happy to lobby for mo more public access. Uh, yours, David. Now, Dr. Ken Caldera had the exact opposite response. Um, but still agrees that transparency is important. My first impression is that what you're trying to solve is a non-problem. I don't think there are any bad actors who want to engage in experiments that have any potential for producing la um, lasting damage, which is what NMOD bans. Further, I would think such bad actors, were they to exist, and were they attempting to do something at scale, could most easily be found through traditional intelligence techniques, e.g. monitoring of financial transactions, monitoring of communications, satellite observations of ground activity, and that network, a network of atmospheric monitoring would be a relatively ineffective way of detecting such a program. In stating that, he is actually saying, um, basically, that our sensors suck. So that's probably not going to work, which is why... You know why I'm saying this to begin with. So um, he also says further, I find the us versus them framing of your email a bit disconcerting. Aren't scientists also citizens? Wouldn't we all want more transparency in the conduct of potentially damaging experiments? I agree with that. Also, the devil's in the details. For example, what's an exa atmospheric experiment? Uh, just for a little context, I sent Dr. David Keith and Ken Caldera a, a early version of the NMOD AA, and in the email, that's what they're both responding to here. So um, they were both asking the same question. Also, the devil's in the details. For example, what's an atmospheric experiment? I'm making an effort in my life to focus on solving real problems and not waste time with purely hypothetical problems. Good for you, Ken. Go solve some real problems. But I do understand. I do appreciate you saying that we would all want more transparency. So you do acknowledge that that is an issue. And finally, Dr. Renault, director. Um, I have an interview with him. You can watch it. And he says, I don't oppose the N odd AA at all. In fact, we need it. So that pretty much sums that up. Lots of legal references down here already. Um, you know, in here about NMOD and others like myself who have called for an update to NMOD. Because basically since 1976 to present, tra um, technology has advanced uh, remarkably. And it basically is just not, it's not up to snuff. It's not covering what we have today. 
Um, I hope you guys will look into some of these. I also um, just added Jolie, Diane, and Rosalind Peterson's uh, Rhode Island House Rule 6011, the Geoengineering Act of 2017. So you guys can check that out. Um, you know, she's got a state by state um, legislation thing going, and I support that as well. Um, but I hope you guys will support me as well, and that is available at climateviewer.com slash nmod. Um, and like I said, it's also available over on YouTube. Check the videos out. So um, another thing, I got this Climate Viewer 3D thing. Uh, I just updated it to this this new version. It's a... Uh, it's kind of a pain in the ass, to be quite honest with you. Um, I did a whole lot of work getting this thing ready, and I've just come to find out that it is just not effective at what I want to do. So, I mean, unfortunately, I thought this would solve some of the problems that I was having because basically there were people coming who couldn't uh, load cesium because it's a 3D application. So, with that being said, this version had like a built-in leaflet flat map. And that would make it more mobile friendly. And I thought that that would be a great thing. But unfortunately for me, I went to try to share a layer. And unfortunately, you know, let me see if I can show you guys this real quick. We'll just pop out of here. This is my sublime text. This is how long the URL is. <laughs> so that's just not really working for me. I mean, it's not working for anybody. I go to try to share this on Facebook and it won't even share. So it's great that it works. Um, and I did add like a little, uh, you know, a little shortened URL thing here. But unfortunately, it doesn't always work. So as you can see there, that shortened. I go to a new tab, I open it up, the link. And let's see if it works. It did work. So it did share. But unfortunately, um, I'm running into a lot of cases where the short URL doesn't even become available because the other URL is just too darn long and a bunch of other issues so regardless i will be switching back to my beautiful self-coded climate viewer 3d very soon i'm um, working on that as we speak in the background so um i hope you guys will keep supporting me on that this will be coming out pretty soon and uh lastly i want to just kind of talk to you guys about um some personal issues as some of you may have noticed my thyroid is swelling out of my neck now I have Graves disease I have um, battled with this for the last nine years and I've been working on climate viewer 3d for and climate viewer.com weather modification history.com the last two years but all together seven eight years and I went to this trip in Austin Texas um, you know things things went better than I would have expected you know I'm I'm new at this it's not really my thing I've never interviewed a person standing up with a microphone and a camera pointed at me in my life so kind of had to wing it all um there's a first time for everything and I think being that I was a complete novice I did a pretty good job I think that I could have probably pressed a lot harder on some of the questioning that would have been great, but also, you know, there's no chance, like, uh, th th there's no second chance to make a good first impression. And I did want to go to this AMS conference and be as cordial as possible because I don't want to be banned. Unfortunately, that's exactly what happened. So the second day we were there, we were removed without cause from the AMS conference. Now, this led to a great deal of stress because um, when I got down there, basically I had already gotten sick from the flight. Um, during all of the interviews, if you watch them, I just want you guys to know this, I was running about 102 temperature uh, the whole two days that I was there, um, sweating profusely under my clothes, and I was sick as a dog. When I got back home, I had pneumonia, lasted about a month, a um, month and a half, um, ended up having three separate trips to the emergency room um, where I couldn't breathe because basically this thyroid had swollen up so large. Um, when I got down to the AMS conference, I couldn't even put on my collar shirt. And I had bought it right before the, the conference. You know, brand new shirt. Let's make sure it fits tight. Next kind of swollen. When I got there, I couldn't even button the button. So quickly, this, this bad boy swole up on me. 
and my health has deteriorated pretty quickly. Now I've lost 20 pounds in the last month and a half. Uh, and, ooh, and um, <laughs> I've been having uh, panic attacks and just my, my Graves disease has taken over my whole life. So unfortunately for me, my medical bills have been going through the roof. Um, I am scheduled for a surgery consultation on the 27th, which is next Friday, and I have not slept for three days as a result of that. Um, things are getting kind of rough. So A, I will hope you guys will pray for me. Um, this, this stress is overwhelming. Um, Graves' disease is, is no laughing matter. It's, it's been a nightmare for a very long time. Um, I hope you guys will support me by also if you if you can if you've got if you've got the ability please come over to climateviewer.com and at the bottom of every page is my Patreon and my PayPal and GoFundMe if you guys could hit me up on PayPal if you guys can donate it all to help out with my medical bills I would greatly appreciate it um, this this last trip really took it out of me and I've been working my butt off to fulfill my obligation to edit all these videos and put them together because basically my camera guy who um, was supposed to do all that video editing, he backed out on me. And um, I never actually hit the, uh, the GoFundMe uh, donation you know, level that I was supposed to get so that I could pay for all this. I'm kind of in debt from that as well. So what I would really appreciate is if you guys could come over here and uh, hit up this PayPal button and, uh, you know, Please help help a brother out because um, my bills are outrageous right now, and I'm about to have surgery. I'm supposed to be going to the Red Pill Expo, um, and it's uh, in Bozeman. Not Bozeman. That's the other one. That's last year up in Spokane, Washington. I'll bring that up real quick. Let you guys see that. So Red Pill Expo is 66 days away. Um, I really would like to be there for this. Um, but unfortunately right now, you know, I'm, I'm going through a lot and I'm going to be having surgery in the next month. And uh, I'd really like to be at this. I'd like to continue doing what I'm doing and be here with all these other speakers. And as you can see, I am right there. So please support me, guys. Um, it's been rough. It's been a rough two months. I'm not doing so well you know, in the, in the stress department, let's just say that to say the least. And, uh, this, this Graves disease highs, lows, um, it's been a, a rocky road. Regardless, we will get through this. Um, I'm a never give up kind of guy. I think you guys have figured that out by now. And, uh, I hope you guys will, you know, check out the Red Pill Expo, check out the NMOD AA, um, this solution is going to become a reality. I, I want to see to that and see this through. I will continue to work on um, Climate Viewer 3D. Uh, that's one of my big focuses right now. I'll try to keep myself sane. Um, and that's going to be coming out pretty soon. Going to look like this. And uh, with your with your support, um, we'll be able to keep this thing going. So. I really appreciate all the love and support I've gotten so far. Um, you guys have always been there for me. Uh, this this surgery thing is going to throw me for a loop. So when you when you see me next, um, hopefully this absolutely huge thyroid will be gone. Um, and I'm going to continue to do some videos like this where I you know start to break out the camera and things like that. But I really uh, man, it's been a rough week, guys. So please uh, support me, pray for me, and uh, stay tuned. Spread the word about the NMOD AA. Um, show people these videos. They're very, very important, and I think they're very informative. So with that, I hope that you guys will uh, keep tuning in to climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com, and uh, support my work and attack ideas, not people. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here? Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to climateviewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal.
and always, attack ideas, not people.